Welcome back. The new year is here. It's right upon us. And every year I remember a favorite stanza of mine from Omar Khayyam in the Wine of the Mystic. He, he wasn't talking about alcohol, of course. He was talking about the internal wine, the Amrita, that is found, the bliss in meditation. And he says in one of his stanza, Now the new year, reviving old desires. The thoughtful soul to solitude retires, where the white hand of Moses on the bow puts out and Jesus from the ground suspires. Beautiful poetry. There's a wonderful translation done by Yogananda. I'll have the link below in case you want to check that out. It's a beautiful book, has some gorgeous artwork in it. I think you'd love it. And here we have such wonderful images, old desires, old desires. Of course, he's not talking about petty, childish, old desires that we had in our childhood. He's talking about some deep, deep old desires in our soul. That's the kind of desires that he's talking about. This brings up a quote from Yogananda that I always remember. He said, for wisdom too, man has native hunger. Isn't that beautiful? He said it so short and succinct and simply. For wisdom too, man has native hunger. Somewhere down deep inside of us, we crave these things. We want this deep and profound meaning in our lives. And this was a primary point of contention between Freud and Jung. We talking about Freud, why he did enough cocaine to kill a small horse. Thank you. Freud said that all of our instincts came from our childhood, that they were rooted in our sexuality and our parenthood. And Jung said, yes, yes, but there's more. There's something else here and it's a little bit deeper. And he was talking about that wonderful search for meaning. Later, another Austrian psychologist, Viktor Frankl, would tell us that meaning is not just part of the puzzle. It is the puzzle. It's the core of what we're looking for in a meaningful life. To have meaning in our lives, we have to find meaning. He famously said, ever more people today have the means to live, but no meaning to live for. And isn't that the case? Isn't that the case of our modern life? The means to live, but no meaning to live for. So this essential piece, where do we find it? <laughs> where is this essential piece in our lives? And the yogi's wonderful answer, inside. Look inside, all the way back to Jung. He said, look inside. There's an old Chinese proverb, look inside the pot, meaning don't waste your time staring at the patterns on the outside of the vase. Look inside the pot and see what's there. And to do that, we have to look at the brain. And to look at the brain, we need the central nervous system. So we use the central nervous system with the heart rate variability resonant breathing to bring us ever closer to the turning point inside the brain where we move from the left brain into the right brain. And why would we do that? Well, it's very beautifully explained by Ian McGilchrist, and I'll have his book down below in case you wanna check it out. But if we look at each part of the brain and we say, which part of the brain contains meaning, actually holds meaning. If we have meaning, where is it held? It's held in the right hippocampus because the right hippocampus is the storehouse of images. And so if you were designing a computer and you could have a repertoire of pictures 
that would inform the intelligence of the computer what it was talking about. That, of course, would give the computer meaning, and that's exactly how your brain works. So you say the word tree, T-R-E-E, -E, and it's spelled out with your left brain. But the image of the tree takes place in the right hippocampus, in the right brain. And so to understand what we're talking about, an image is worth a thousand words, right? And so when we get that image of the tree, aha, we get it. We know what we're talking about. And that's why the right hippocampus is this storehouse of meaning. And when you touch on it in meditation and you suddenly touch a thousand pictures in your meditation or 10 pictures, well, that's 10,000 meanings, isn't it? Because it's worth a thousand words, right? So that's 10,000 meanings. And that's why you get an instant download from your higher self when you begin to get closer to that right hippocampal center of meaning. So in all of the world, in all of the ways that we create meaning for ourselves in our lives, one of the most beautiful ways, what the yogi was absolutely convinced it was the essential way was to look inside the pot, to go inside in order to hunt that meaning. And that's what Omar Khayyam was talking about in these old desires, that old desire for meaning, so that we too, from the ground, can rise up and suspire. So, I hope you love this. I hope it was a wonderful journey from Omar Khayyam to Yogananda to Freud to Jung to Viktor Frankl and to Ian McGilchrist. I hope you love this journey. I hope it sets up an idea of meaning for this year for you in 2021. God bless, and I wish you all a blissful, happy,